Hello, and welcome to Oxlabs webinar. Thank you for joining in. My name is Nada Swishnauskas, and I'm a commercial product owner here at Oxlabs. My job involves working with various businesses and identifying how they can benefit best from our products. Let me share my slides with you right now. To those who are new to Oxilabs, let me briefly tell you who we are and what we do here. Then I will introduce you to today's agenda. So Oxilabs is a company that provides various tools that help scrape public information from the web. We are based in Vilnius, Lithuania, and we have over 1,000 clients around the world, including Fortune 500 companies. We pride ourselves on providing premium services and some of the best web scraping tools. Our products are covered with Lloyd's insurance and they meet international ISO standards. We also have been awarded as the best proxy provider by an independent proxy review. So let's go through today's agenda. First, we will talk about web scraping. What companies gather public data from the web and why they do it? We will then introduce proxies, their main types and their role in the web scraping process. We will cover the main issues that occur while scraping public information with proxies and suggest how to solve these issues with a powerful web scraping tool. Then you will have a chance to watch a live demonstration of Oxlab's public web scraping tool called Real-Time Crawler. And last but not least, we have a special offer for you all that you're attending. So stay with us until the end. If you have any questions throughout the presentations, feel free to type them into Q&A box and my colleagues will answer them. So let's dive in. Why do companies scrape web, you ask? Different companies do it for different reasons, but we can identify three main ones. First of all, companies scrape public data to get business insights. Various information allow companies to get insights into different markets and make informed business decisions. Second reason for web scraping is providing data as a service. We will dive deeper into different industries, but a good example for this use case would be insurance comparison websites. They basically gather public data from various insurance websites and then conveniently provide it to customers all in one place for comparison. And last but not least, web scraping allows automating various business operations. For example, it can be used in brand protection as web scraping helps look for counterfeit products in the market and collect evidence that could be used to remove listings from e-commerce platforms. What companies use web scraping? Web scraping is an inseparable part of e-commerce industry. E-commerce businesses gather public data for pricing intelligence. This involves tracking, monitoring, and analyzing pricing data to understand the market and make pricing changes in real time. They also scrape data to analyze the competition and monitor products to see what items are the most popular in other marketplaces. Search engine optimization is also driven by public data scraping. Public data from search engines helps generate insights from website optimization. For example, it allows companies to see how their website could be optimized to rank higher or set on search engines. Various companies provide tools for keyword monitoring also. These tools provide insights into keyword ranking on various search engines and help marketing teams make strategic business decisions. SEO companies also use web scraping to monitor ads. Companies or ad network owners check under what condition their ads are being displayed throughout the web from various locations. Other websites include cybersecurity companies. As I mentioned previously, brand protection companies use web scraping for identifying counterfeit products in various marketplaces and collect evidence in order to remove listings from uh, any particular e-commerce platform. Also, cybersecurity companies use proxies to check and detect possibly malicious website links. And this way, they are trying to protect companies from malicious cyber attacks. These are the some most of the common uh, web scraping use cases. There are many more, but I hope this information helps you to get a better understanding of the public data scraping landscape. Why do companies need proxies? I have already mentioned that some companies use proxies for web scraping. I would like to explain what they are and why they are needed in web scraping. 
The primary challenge in web scraping is not getting blocked. Blocks usually occur in the form of CAPTCHAs or various errors. Web scraping is an automated process, and some websites block the IP address from where the scraping activity originates. That's where the proxies come in. Proxies allow scraping public information without getting blocked and, access, and lets users access information from different kind of locations around the world. There are three main types of proxies. I will only briefly describe each, each of them, but if you are interested in learning more, you will find loads of helpful information on our blog. So data center proxies. Data center proxies run in data centers all around the world. This type of proxies is a cost-effective solution for websites that do not block scrapers by IP type. Residential proxies, on the other hand, come from organic users who willingly participate in residential proxy networks. These proxies allow users to scrape websites from any location in the world and get a different IP address with every request. Companies that use residential proxies for public web scraping have a smaller chance of getting blocked. Static residential proxies are a combination of data center and residential proxies. Unlike residential proxies, they do not change with every request, but they are assigned via contract by an internet service provider, just like residential proxies. To, le to learn more about different proxy types, visit our website on oxlabs.io and check out our blog. We have lots of useful information over there. So let's get into general web scraping issues. Web scraping can look like a straightforward process, but to do it well, companies need to overcome several frequently encountered issues. One of them is IP recognition. This is a quite basic one. The server can see whether the IP address is from a data center or is it a residential one. In some cases, data center proxies will be instantaneously blocked as they are not considered as coming from human users, unlike residential proxies. Another popular anti-bot measure is CAPTCHAs. This is a challenge response time of test that often asks you to fill in correct codes or identify objects in pictures. Most bots cannot bypass CAPTCHAs. The main goal while dealing with CAPTCHAs is correctly managing request parameters so that CAPTCHAs would be avoided entirely. One of the request parameters is called cookies. A normal user rarely goes to a specific website directly. It usually comes from a search engine or an ad, so to avoid being recognized, your crawling process should mimic a real user. So companies need to acquire and manage cookies to maintain high scraping success rates. Another common web scraping issue is browser fingerprinting. This refers to information that is gathered about a computing device for identification purposes. In other words, any browser will pass on data about your device to the website such as operating system, language, hardware that is present, and other types of parameters. Your web scraper bots will need to acquire and maintain organic fingerprints throughout the scraping process. Headers are part of the fingerprint. Headers tells web, set, web servers for what device or browser content needs to be served. The site can see your geolocation from the IP address, time zone, language, and other parameters. If they find inconsistencies and illogical combinations, your IP will get blocked. So let's see what are the request headers and how they look. So in this particular website, I, uh, I can see what kind of headers are being sent by my browser. So the most important header I would say is the user agent header. User agent header describes what kind of device or browser I am using and the website uh, basically knows uh, what kind of content to serve. In case the user agent would describe a mobile device, this particular website should recognize it and then uh, retrieve the results that are being optimized uh, for that particular mobile device. There are other headers uh, which describes, for example, system language. So in, in my case, it's a Lithuanian language. So uh, if the website would support by default Lithuanian language and it would see this particular header, uh, the contents of the website uh, most probably would be in Lithuanian. So these are the headers 
that every every browser uh, sends with every request and and web servers are able to see these parameters and i would say these particular header combinations are the most important thing in the web scrape getting back to the slides uh, there's another common web scraping issue it's called infrastructure maintenance and data consistency so for large scale scraping operations uh, you need a lot of redundant infrastructure any infrastructure malfunction leads to data delivery problems and potential losses. Also, to ensure that data gathered is consistent, it is important to have data validation process because not every request sent through a proxy gets required content. So if you get an error or you don't see any content that you need, you need to retry your request and hope for a better result. Some websites tend to load data dynamically or check for users' mouse movements with the help of JavaScript in order to distinguish whether the user is a real one or a bot. In order to load all the necessary data and avoid triggering anti-bot protection systems, users need to use headless browsers, which requires a lot of processing power to do automated browser. Changes or problems can appear not only on the client side, but on the website itself. The constant layout, website functionality, and behavior changes requires a team of system maintainers, which is a big part of budget for scraping operations. Outsourcing scraping operations or using web scraping tools in the market can save resources and reduce costs up to 30%. All these issues require development time and resources. This is where the real-time crawler comes in. Our product easily tackles all major web scraping problems, providing easy access to publicly available data at scale. Real-time crawler offers full feature set required for successful web scraping operations. And in this image, you can see which data collection parts are being covered by our product. With real-time crawler, user doesn't need to develop its own scrapers and support them. Real-time crawler already generates up-to-date request headers on its own, ensuring that the request fingerprint is as close as possible to a real user. Real-time crawler is capable of detecting if all required data of the retrieved content is present and automatically retry the request if the system was unable to fetch the data from the first try. Real-time crawler features a proxy pool that contains more than 100 million addresses in 195 locations. It also supports city-level geolocation targeting. Already integrated proxy pool, which is automatically being managed by the system, allows users to forget about proxy acquisition and management difficulties. When it comes to data fetching, real-time crawler performs exceptionally well while scraping static content. It also has the capability to load the data dynamically in the headless browser if the website requires such functionality. JavaScript rendering functionality saves a lot of time and development effort. For selected websites, acquired HTML documents can be parsed and delivered in the structured JSON files. So these are the main features and benefits of our product. Let's move on further to our demo, where you will be able to see how our real-time crawler performs in real use cases. For this particular demonstration, we will be using demo website for scraping purposes. It's called Books to Scrape. So let's say we want to scrape some e-commerce websites to see what kind of product does it sell, for what prices the products are being sold, and whether the products are in stock. To get the product listings, we can easily use real-time crawler. What I did in advance is prepared a short Python script, which basically makes a request with a set of parameters to our system, and our system gets back with the results and save the results in an HTML file. So in the payload, in the parameter section, I specified the URL of the website and the geolocation from where I want to scrape that particular website. Uh, the rest of the code just saves the response in another file. So let's run uh, the script. And within a couple of seconds, we will see in the code editor that we are receiving another file called results.html. In the file, we can see that there's some data from the website, but we can actually open up uh, this particular file in our browser. So we see that this is the website, even though it's not properly 
uh, rendered, uh, formatted, uh, because style sheets are missing, uh, we can see that this particular uh, page has all the information that is present in the uh, original website. So we can see that we got the books titles, uh, prices, whether the product is in stock or not. Uh, so yeah, it's that easy to get a web page. We can go further. We can go back to the original page and we can basically scrape another web page, uh, page two. And we can simply just copy the URL, paste it in our script, save the file, make another request. And after a couple of seconds, uh, we will get the HTML uh, file of that particular website. So let's open up again. Uh, and we can see that we got other titles. In case you wanna go deeper into the product uh, pages, you can simply use uh, the acquired HTML file, which I opened uh, here in the code editor and parse out all the links uh, to other pages. By following these links, by submitting these links to a real-time crawler, you will be able to crawl the whole page. Uh, so let's say I wanna uh, access how music works book product page. I can simply click on the uh, page, copy the URL, paste it in the script as well, save it, run it, and yeah, after opening up the HTML file, we can see that this particular information about the book is fully present. Uh, we can see the title of the book, just like in this particular website. The title, the price, the stock, uh, product description, and other product-related information. Identical information is right in the newly acquired HTML file. The title, the price, uh, the stock, and descriptions and other information. So it's that easy to use real-time crawler. So that's about it. Uh, you can see how our real-time crawler really works. And now, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a special offer for you. We're giving a free trial of real-time crawler. All you need to do is message us on WeChat. Briefly tell us about your business case and mention that you learned about real-time crawler during this webinar. Our team will get in touch with you and tell you about the next steps for your trial. This offer is only valid until the end of June, so please make sure to drop us an email soon. Well, this is it for today. Thank you for your time. If you would like to learn more about the topics covered today, please make sure to visit our blog. You will find a lot of useful information there. Besides, we are also hosting a virtual web scraping conference called OxyCon. It will take place in August. The conference will feature talks, workshops, and panel discussions by industry leaders. Early bird registrations are already open, so make sure to book your seat early and start networking with web scraping experts as soon as possible. And last but not least, if you're interested in any of our products, get in touch with us via our website and we will help you to find the best solution for your business. Thank you and goodbye.